Hi, I'm Kate Hayes, and I lead advocacy communications at Bear. And joining me is one of my new coworkers, my son, Kellen, who's 11 years old. And like probably most of your kids, my kids are at home doing school right now during this pandemic. And I asked him to give me a hand because during our uh, Science at Home series that we're doing for Bear, we're also talking to some scientists who are at home, and we want to learn a little bit more about what they do for their jobs. So joining Kellen and I is Dr. Larry Gilbertson. Hi, Larry. How are you? Hi, Kate. Hi, Kellen. Welcome to my home. This is my home office for the time being. So, Larry, what do you do at Bear? I'm a scientist and I'm a what we call a molecular biologist. That's the type of scientist I am. And what that means is that I study molecules and molecules are make up everything in your body and in a corn plant. Uh, but specifically, I work on DNA. I love DNA. It's really cool. I love it so much. I even have a model right here on my desk. I also have one on my desk at work. So I keep it close to remind me how awesome it is. I've learned very little about DNA in school. Could you bring up the subject a bit more and help the viewers at home understand it? I'd be happy to. So DNA, it stores all the information. It's like a blueprint or a recipe that makes you the way you are, makes your eye color the way it is, makes this orange the way it is, makes this banana the way it is, makes this sweet potato the way it is. So everything that's alive has DNA in it. And it's what makes the tomato the way it is, makes the banana the way it is. Um, and it's, the, it's like the instructions. And our cells read those instructions to try to figure out whether to be blue or brown, whether to be big or small, whether to be resistant to a disease or not. So that's why I like it so much. So Larry, what do you do with DNA at your job? Yeah, so first we learn as much about it as possible. We try to read the DNA. DNA is made up of uh, A's, C's, G's, and T's, and those four letters of the alphabet combine together to give all of the information to make you the way you are and to make a corn plant the way it is. So first, we learn as much about it by reading it. We literally take the DNA out and try to figure out what the sequence of those letters are, and then using that information, we can decode it and learn about what makes it the way it is. Then, once we learn that, we try to think about ways to change it, to improve it. Because when you improve the DNA, when you change the DNA, you will change the traits. What makes your eye color the way it is, what makes a banana not have seeds, and so on. And so we first learn about the DNA, and then we try to make changes in it in order to improve the food and the crops. Why does it matter at all? What's wrong with keeping the original plant? Well, plants have changed a lot over time and we need to continue to change the plants and improve them because the population of the earth is growing. There's gonna be almost 10 billion people on the plant by the year 2050. And we have less and less land to grow plants on because there's more people and that means more houses and more roads and things like that. And so we have to find ways to continue to improve them. And humans have been doing this for thousands of years, but we need to try other ways of doing it. We need to use all the tools that we can and breeding is one of them, GMOs is another one. And now in the last few years, a new method is starting to come up called gene editing. That's why I have this t-shirt on because that's what I work on now. I, I work on gene editing using CRISPR and it's a really exciting technology and it's another way that we can try to improve plants. That's really cool. Thanks for doing this interview with us. Anything else you'd like to tell us before we end this interview? That's a great question, Kellen. It's been a real honor to be talking with you and I've really enjoyed it. And yes, I think the last thing I would say is for kids in school, kids growing up interested in science, or even if you're not interested in science yet, I think it's just important to just keep asking questions. That is the foundation of the scientific method. Be curious, ask questions, and then 
try to get the answers. And you do that through experimentation by learning. And that is the scientific method. So if you're doing that, you're basically a scientist. All right. Well, thank you, Kellen, for all your help. And thank you, Larry, for joining us from home. Hopefully everything continues to go well there. And then thanks to all of you guys for um, watching today. And remember to check out our other Science at Home resources and experiments, other cool stuff on bear.com.